Welcome to Lesson 2E, Barometers. In this lesson, we're going to learn about liquid barometers. We'll develop some equations and do an example problem for a mercury barometer. First, a quick review of hydrostatics. The general equation for hydrostatics or fluid statics is dp dz is minus rho g. This holds for any fluid, whether incompressible or compressible. For an incompressible liquid, we can integrate this equation to get what I call a workhorse equation for hydrostatics. Several rules result from this equation. Rule number one, if you can draw a continuous curve through the same fluid from point one to point two, then P1 equal P2 if Z1 equals Z2. In other words, if the two points are at the same elevation. For example, points one and two are at the same elevation and we can draw a continuous curve through the same fluid. So P1 equal P2. Similarly for P4 and P5. Points 2 and 3 are at the same elevation, but if I try to draw a continuous curve through the same fluid, I can't do it because I have to pass through this interface between water and mercury. So P2 does not equal P3. P3 will actually be greater than P2 because mercury is more dense than water. Rule number two, pressure at any free surface open to the atmosphere is atmospheric pressure, P atmosphere. Atmosphere. There's a comment here that this rule holds not only for hydrostatics, but even for moving surfaces. This triangle symbol indicates that the surface is exposed to the local atmospheric pressure. To find the pressure here at point 2, we use our hydrostatics equation. P2 is the one below, equal P1, the one above, plus rho GH. Since P1 is atmospheric pressure, P2 is P atmospheric plus rho GH. This is an absolute pressure. In terms of gauge pressure, P2 gauge is just rho GH, since we subtract off the atmospheric pressure. Rule number 3. In most practical problems, atmospheric pressure may be approximated as constant at all elevations, unless the change in elevation, delta Z here, is huge. For example, if we're pumping water from one reservoir to another, we'll assume that P atmosphere 1 is equal to P atmosphere 2, even though they're at different elevations. If you want to be more exact, you'd have to calculate the difference in atmospheric pressure due to the air column difference between points 1 and 2. But since a liquid like water is so much more dense than air, a good approximation is just to assume that both of these are at the same pressure. So we approximate P1 equal P2 equal P atmosphere. By the way, we will do many problems like this in this course. Rule number four, shape of a container does not matter in hydrostatics. Unless you have very small diameter tubes where surface tension and capillary effects are important. Consider three containers all filled up to the same level with water. A jug, a graduated cylinder, and a vase. Some students may think that point one one has a higher pressure than point two since this is such a large jug. Others may think that point three has a higher pressure than point two or point one because all the water is concentrated on that point at the bottom. But it turns out that P1 and P2 and P3 are all equal. Our workhorse equation for hydrostatics confirms this because there's the same delta Z for all three cases. Thus, all the pressures are equal to P atmosphere plus rho G delta Z. If you're not convinced, draw a thin column of liquid above each of these three points. Ignoring the water surrounding this column, we see that each of these three has exactly the same column height above it, and therefore the same pressure. This would even be true for a funny shaped container where you can't really draw the column height above it. Even so, P4 is equal to P5 for this case, since delta Z is the same. Rule number five, pressure is constant across a flat fluid fluid interface. For example, water and mercury here. I drew it with a small meniscus on each side of the tube. When you have multiple liquids, you need to apply our workhorse equation twice, one for the water and one for the mercury. For the water, P1 is P atmosphere plus rho of the water G times this delta Z. We do a similar thing for the mercury, but use rho mercury. Here are our equations. Plugging this one into here, we get this. P atmosphere plus rho water G delta Z1 plus rho mercury G delta Z2 is the pressure at P2. You need to be careful if you have tubes that are a very small diameter, because the liquid forms a meniscus and also a capillary rise, which invalidates this rule. Now let's talk about a liquid barometer. This is a common application of hydrostatics. The purpose is to measure the local value of atmospheric pressure. This would be an absolute pressure. Mercury is the most common liquid used. and We call such a barometer a mercury barometer. Let's analyze a mercury barometer. What's not shown here in an actual case 
would be a ruler where we can measure this height h. How do you fill this test tube with mercury like this? Well, you'd fill up the test tube and then quickly insert it upside down into a vat of mercury. What will happen is some of the mercury will fall until it stops at this stable location. There will be a gap up here, which we're going to consider a pure vacuum. In reality, the pressure here is the vapor pressure of mercury, but the vapor pressure of mercury is very tiny. So for our approximation, we assume that P is approximately zero in this gap. This portion is open to the atmosphere, so the pressure is P atmosphere there. Let's do an analysis. If we call these points 1 and 2, we can draw a continuous curve from 1 to 2 through the same fluid, mercury, at the same elevation. Therefore, P1 has to equal P2. Let's call this point up here 3. P3 is approximately 0. So we can write P1 equal P2 equal P atmosphere. From 2 to 3, we use our hydrostatic equation. P below is P2, which equals P above, which is P3, plus rho times g times h. This density is the density of the liquid, which is mercury. But P3 is approximately 0, and P2 is P atmosphere. Therefore, P atmosphere is equal to rho of the mercury times g times h. This is our mercury barometer equation. h, as you may recall, is a head an equivalent column height. And keep in mind that this is an absolute pressure. Let's do a quick example. Serena looks at the weather app on her phone and it shows that the local atmospheric pressure is 737 millimeters of mercury. She needs to calculate the local atmospheric pressure in units of kPa. Using our barometer equation, this is the density of mercury to four significant digits times gravity times h and then some unity conversion factors. A meter is a thousand millimeters. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. We want to result in kPa. A kPa is a thousand newtons per meter squared. My calculator gives 98.153 kPa. Since I'm limited to three significant digits, I'll report my final answer as 98.2 kPa. Just a comment about why mercury is used. Notice that for a common atmospheric pressure like 98.2 kPa, the column height for mercury is about three-fourths of a meter. If you used a liquid with a much smaller density, this column height would have to be very large, and that becomes somewhat impractical. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.